Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. It's now time for Aging in Style with our great friend Joe Vitale from Vitale Wealth Management. Joe, it's good to see you. Good morning, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing great. Good. And don't forget to get Joe's newsletter, Financial Vitals. It has all the latest market trends and the financial news that you need to know. Just scan that QR code right there on your screen to get uh, all the information that you need to know. Let's go ahead and jump into today's topic, something all of us want to know. Yes post-election expectations. So what can we expect from the market with the results of the current election? You're gonna see, I think what, I think what you're gonna see is based on prior right elections, mm -hmm. you're gonna see some volatility. You're gonna see initial response because of the strategies that we're gonna see. We're gonna see they're, you know, they're very, the market responds favorably mm -hmm. when you have deregulation. Mm -hmm. So that's initially what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a lot of people very positive on it. And then you're gonna see it kind of settle in. How's it gonna be on this policy, this policy? Mm -hmm. So you start to see oil prices are gonna come down. You're gonna see different things happen, which you're, and it's gonna be, it, it is, especially when Congress gets in, you've got both sides and you got that. So you're gonna see a little volatility, but it's already starting to go up, you mm -hmm. know, intentionally because of that, you, because you're gonna, and that's, it's still up in the air because mm -hmm. we don't know. Mm -hmm. But all the, for, all, all the headwinds are for, increased growth right now. Okay. And, and Joe, why did we see such a spike in the market after the election? Well, you know, it, it was actually baked in originally. If you saw a lot of the betting odds, you know, mm -hmm. which is really weird that you can right, bet on a presidential yeah. election, right? Yeah. But all the, all the, you know, Vegas and all the betting odds were, they were showing that Trump with all the, was in the lead. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, the market said, oh, well, that's going to be good for deregulation. That's going to be good for, mm -hmm. for company earnings, which mm -hmm. is how the market is driven. Mm -hmm. So that was already the head when we already started to go up. And then when, when he got in, what you see is they go, oh, my goodness, now we're going to start to see pro-growth because what happens is he's going to cut taxes. They love cutting taxes mm -hmm. on corporations, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you cut taxes on the corporations, what does that do? That's going to give you more earnings. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you more growth. That's mm -hmm. going to give you more expansion. Mm -hmm. So it's good all the way through. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the market responds favorably to that, and that's mm -hmm. why the big bump right off the bat. Mm. And, Joe, tell us, uh, what suggestions do you have for us who are trying to plan for the future as it pertains to our tax planning? You know, for tax planning, the one thing is, as you know, Trump did that first rollback back in 2017, which is going to expire in 2026. Mm -hmm. So as far as tax planning, we've been all, always planning that, my gosh, this is going to expire in 2026. We're in the lowest tax bracket environment we've ever been. Mm -hmm. So we really need to start planning to do some Roth conversions, mm -hmm. look for tax-free strategies down the road, because we know taxes are going to go up. They have to. Mm. It's also a little scary, right, because the last few years we've seen a lot of spending because of COVID and other things happening. We've got $7 trillion of spending. We've got a bunch of debt. Mm -hmm. So historically, when that happens, what happens? You're going to have to have increased taxes to pay for that. Nobody wants that. Yeah. We don't <laughs> want increased taxes. So we've been looking at, especially for retirement, where most of our retirees, their biggest nest egg is in their 401k. Mm -hmm. Well, when they start pulling that out, it's all taxable, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I won't care. I won't be in a high tax bracket. Mm -hmm. But when you look at taxes on Social Security, when you look at all this other stuff, you're going to be paying a lot of taxes. Yeah. So we've been doing a lot of tax planning ahead of time and trying to look at tax-free strategies. We're still going to go forward with that, even though we have confidence that Trump's going to not repeal or not let them expire. He'll renew them. Mm -hmm. So we think that we'll still stay in the lower tax bracket. Mm -hmm. However, down the road, we still are very you know, bullish and staying to the point where we got to look at tax-free strategies because mm -hmm. one way or another, you're going to pay tax and we got to make sure that we're paid as little as possible. Yeah. And, and Joe, what is the biggest impact on retirement? Uh, inflation right now, mm -hmm. inflation and taxes right now. A lot of people, the taxes aren't so bad. Mm -hmm. Our whole idea and our whole goal is we never want to see people pay tax on their Social Security. But over 33, 34,000, they're paying tax on. 85% mm -hmm. of it's taxable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of it. And then inflation, the inflation's just been ridiculous yeah. lately, right? I mean, my gosh, five bucks for a dozen eggs. Yeah. Why is that even the, Why is that even a conversation? Yeah. So a lot of our retirees are going to the store and they're like, my gosh, how, I can't keep up. Mm -hmm. 350 for a gallon of gas or 329, you know, mm -hmm. when it's down. So we're going to see that. I think we're going to see inflation go down, but still that's been mm -hmm. a huge impact for our retirees. Yeah. The inflation's just been horrible, but I think we're going to start to see that come down. 
What about Social Security? Should people be worried right now? Not at all. I, I, I'm really confident about that. Okay. You know, there's a lot of, I've t uh, looked at a lot of the, the pending legislation and everything mm -hmm. and what they're mm -hmm. talking about already. We shouldn't see any cuts to Social Security. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is, is especially Gen Xers, you know, who are mm -hmm. coming up for, you know, in, in their 50s, late, mm -hmm. the oldest now, the 59. Mm -hmm. It's like Social Security, you know, is that something that we're going to get, right. right? And I still think so. Mm -hmm. However, we got to get the younger kids to work so that they can start <laughs> funding the Social Security right. like the Gen Xers did for the baby boomers who right. are getting it all now, right. right? So, I mean, we can't, we can't not, we can't put our head in the sand and say there's no problem with Social Security mm -hmm. because the baby boomers are all retiring right now mm -hmm. and they are the largest one and they, I mean, they all paid into Social Security yeah. and now they're taking it. Yeah. So the next generation is supposed to help with mm -hmm. the funding of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we start to see some of the kids help with that too. I'm doing my part, Joe. That's right. That's, I know you are. I, <laughs> we got to get more people like right. <laughs> so that. So that's the biggest thing because that's what we need. And, yeah. and especially, it's like a lot of times all that free money with people sitting mm -hmm. on the back and not going to work, yeah. you know. So I think we're going to start seeing more and more of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not real worried about the Social Security system. Those are some of the entitlements that, not really entitlements because we all paid into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like those are things that, that those are ways that those can get fixed. Those yeah. can get solved. Mm -hmm. um, but moving forward, yeah, I'm not too concerned. Yeah, and with presidential elections, people just always get nervous on both sides. Yeah. What should people know if they just want to stay the course? You just keep your head, keep keep your emotions out of your investments. Mm. That's the biggest one, right? Mm -hmm. You do the disciplined approach, you do the dollar cost averaging, you make sure the money's growing. And a lot of times, I had people right before the election, I mean, I can't tell you how many, mm -hmm. said, Joe, you know, put it in cash, because if this happens, if this mm -hmm. happens, I'm like, you know what, no. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is you're not gonna be able to respond quick enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, Joe, you should do what your client wants. I'm here to keep my client's head and, and could right because we all get emotionally charged yeah. so I said just trust it trust mm -hmm. it and sure enough if I would have had it in cash mm -hmm. we would have missed a huge 5% uptick mm -hmm. you know and, and you can't respond quick enough mm -hmm. that's the same thing with COVID when COVID happened the market went down and people freaked out they couldn't get back in quick enough mm -hmm. so it's you never get the emotions you have enough cash on hand mm -hmm. you have your three to six months emergency fund you keep your money growing mm -hmm. and you don't make um, emotional decisions on yeah. your money Joe, thanks for being our voice of reason. I try. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we go, don't forget to get Joe's newsletter, market updates, and more through his newsletter, Financial Vitals. And if you want more information on today's topic, head on over to the Aging and Style page on WNEM.com.